In this video, I'm going to tell you why huge battle reports probably aren't a good idea. Scale is kind of important in tabletop wargaming, and also kind of not. Now, generally most tabletop wargaming is done in what's known as 28mm scale. 28mm scale is, the, the, the scale is measured, evidently, from the eyes to the bottom of the feet of the model as if it were just standing like normal, like T-pose or whatever, I guess. So when they're just standing there from the eye, the eye line to the bottom of the feet, that's 28 millimeter, or it might be 15 if it's smaller, or six millimeter. There's all kinds of different scales within um, tabletop wargaming. And some of them are completely, you can't mix them at all. You can't have some six millimeter stuff and some 40 millimeter stuff. Like six millimeter would be maybe like, I don't know, like old Epic stuff, you know, GW Citadel Epic versus, uh, you know, Marvel Crisis Protocol. That's just not going to work out, right? But you can be sort of close and it's fine. Some people will get real fussy. They'll be like, well, these guys are like 25, you know, millimeter and these guys are 28. These guys are 28 heroic. And, you know, sometimes people are tall and sometimes people are short. You, you can easily kind of mix things together a little bit within a range. Again, 6 to 40, no. Even 6 to 28 or 15 to 28, that would look really weird. But 25, 28, 30, 32, not too bad. As we start to head into 38 and 40, eh, that might be a little weird. It's kind of up to you. But there is a line, and everybody's line is different. And then, like I said, there's also sometimes just too much. Now, Obviously, this is a 28 millimeter scale uh, Chaos Space Marine uh, Black Legion uh, miniature from Games Workshop, and I built and painted this years and years and years ago. And this is a 1 18th scale uh, Chaos Space Marine, again, Black Legion action figure from Joy Toy, which they already, you know, they painted. I didn't do anything. I just kind of put the little gun on him and all that kind of stuff in the backpack and all that jazz. These two are obviously very out of scale for each other. This guy barely comes up to his, just a little bit past his knee. But I talked about getting some of these Joy Toy action figures some months back here on the channel and what I thought of them and all that kind of stuff. You can check that out. Pachow. And in the comments, there were a lot of people who said that I should try to do a battle report with these models. Uh, I, I thought about it and I thought about the pros and cons and what I would need, uh, and what kind of work it would take, and all that kind of stuff. And at the end, I kind of decided it wasn't a particularly good idea. First and foremost, I'm not going to play Kill Team with them. That was a big suggestion in the comments and all that kind of stuff. And for one thing, honestly, I'm not particularly a fan of Kill Team 2021. I was a big fan of the previous version, Kill Team 2018. Had tons of videos about it. Painted a whole bunch of different, you know, uh, different kill teams, had all that kind of stuff going on. New version came out 2021. It's not for me, so I shifted to doing other things. So I probably wouldn't be doing that with, you know, these models, these, these, these action figures. Secondly, I'm not made out of money, right? Like, these guys aren't cheap. And, you know, if you were going to be running a, even just regular kill team stuff like that, you would need probably five to ten models, roughly, depending on which forces you went with and which forces that they make over a Joy Toy, per side. And that could get real expensive real quick. Now, admittedly, you don't got to build them, you don't got to paint them, but still, it just that's a lot of money to do that kind of thing. Potentially, if I was to do some sort of battle report, what I would do would use a different game. Something like maybe Space Weirdos, which I talk quite a bit about here, Planet 28, or maybe even Grimdark Future Firefight. Space Weirdos, I've got forces that are five to six models. Uh, Planet 28, there are times when you can build a force that's three models, easy. Uh, Grimdark Future Firefight, I built some Space Marines, they call them Battle Brothers over there. Grimdark Future Firefight, that's from One Page Rules. And um, I've got, a, like I said, a Battle Brothers force that's four models. So that's not terrible. And I could potentially go down that road if I did decide to do battle reports with models like this. It would be kind of expensive but not nearly as expensive as doing Kill Team. It's not just the cost, though. Um, these models, I think, frankly, would be very difficult to play with, to play a game with. They're cool. They're very uh, adjustable, like their knees and their ankles and all the, the toesies and all the little parts, all this stuff 
so you can position them and put them on your shelf and make them look like they're doing a cool thing or something like that. But they're also, there's not like a button you can push on them to lock them down either. So every time that you're going to pick them up to move them from point A to point B, something like that, they're going to get readjusted and potentially the legs will move a little bit. And uh, these guys kind of have a bit of a problem standing just by themselves. You have to position them just right to get them to stand. Nope, doesn't want to. You guys can't see that. Oh, okay, okay. I don't touch him. He's fine. But if you bump the table or anything like that or roll dice near him, he's possibly going to fall over. Now, he's not built for gaming. Let's be perfectly honest. So it's not a fault of the thing. It's just, it's kind of the way it is, right? You know, um, they're also a little bit fragile. They're not designed for kind of a lot of, you know, again, they're action figures technically, I guess, but there's not a lot of action going on there, right? You know what I mean? When you were a kid and you were playing I don't know if you're real old like me, maybe He-Man, uh, you know, G.I. Joe, stuff like that. Those things were pretty robust. They could take a lot of work, a lot of little hands twisted and cranking on them. But eventually that rubber band that held their torso to their butt would eventually come off or break or whatever. And then, you know, that would be a real bummer. So these things are much more fragile than that. And you'd have to be very careful with them. I think, honestly, you would need some sort of 3D printed base for them to stand on. They do have tiny little, tiny little holes on their, on, you know, for, for pegs that you could put them on. If you ever did Star Wars people or any of that kind of stuff, they always had little holes like that too. So you could have them stand in the, you know, the Tatooine cantina and you move that lever. What, you know, if, again, you got to be pretty old, but I would have to get some sort of weird kind of 3D printed bases to make them the right scale, the right size and all that kind of stuff. And it wouldn't just be for standing. It would also be for measuring. Are we going to measure chest to chest, foot to foot, all that kind of stuff? When you're using normal miniatures, they have a base and you usually measure base to base. Well, these guys don't have bases, so I'd probably have to make bases so that we'd have something to work with in the gaming. And then, uh, well, there's the table size. A four foot by six foot table is about as big as a table as I have access to, which is the same for probably most people who've been playing games like this for a while. You may have smaller space, you may have a bigger space, but Four by six is generally what I've got, and I'm not sure if it would be properly big enough. So I kind of suck at math, right? But I'm not able to really figure out the conversions between 32 millimeter scale and 1 18th scale. But like eyeballing it, I feel like a five, like a four by six table for even a skirmish game with models that, that are this big would still seem maybe just a little bit too small. It might be right. If you were aiming towards something kind of like Kill Team, like a 22 by 30 inch, and you wanted to scale it up, that would be maybe close, but it's certainly not like a 3 by 3, I don't think. And then there's the biggest, you know, pun intended, problem. Terrain. Now, obviously, the normal terrain that I use when playing my games with my normal miniatures would not work out with these action figures. These guys, like, would tower over any ruins or buildings or anything that I put near them. There are... Some pieces of 28 millimeter terrain, some types of different terrain that might work, um, massive rock outcroppings and hills, things like that. They will look real big next to, you know, the little guys, but they'll just look like a, a smaller rock outcropping next to the big guys. Trees, I don't think would work. That kind of stuff would look really kind of weird. It kind of depends, but um, everything else, honestly will look silly next to them. If you put them next to any kind of ruins, any kind of, you know, uh, building, any kind of anything that, that, that has, yeah, anything that has skulls on it, the skulls will be so tiny next to them and all that kind of stuff. The big benefit to sticking, generally, with a single scale for all of your tabletop wargaming is that then the terrain is completely interchangeable. You got these trees that you use in this game. Well, now you can use them in that game. You got these buildings and ruins you use in this game. You can now use them in that game. As long as the scale's real close and not even that close, it'll work. But with these guys, it, it, it won't. Well, you should just build special terrain that's scaled right for these potential, you know, huge bat reps, I hear some of you saying. And, and now, if you listen very, very, very closely, you can hear me saying... That would be a giant pain in the butt. Like, I don't, again, I'm lousy at math, right? But a ruined building of this size in comparison to a normal model would then have to be absolutely massive to be the same size comparison, you know, to something this big. Like, you know, a normal ruin from, let's say, a Games Workshop, City Fight, Citadel, you know, whatever. It's, you're, I don't know, maybe a foot tall at its highest. 
So this thing would have to be three to four feet tall to be even kind of close and make it look right. And then, you know, there's a whole bunch of problems with that. Obviously, it's a, a huge amount of time to build terrain like that, specifically for one battle report or maybe one series of battle reports. Uh, then it's a lot more painting because it's just a lot more physical shape, uh, space. Um, and then, you know, obviously, because it's bigger, there's a lot more materials that I would have to buy and go through all that. And you have to put detail and greeblies and things like that all over, let's say, a ruined building or whatever. And let's say I do get all this stuff built. Then where do I put it? Storage is a big deal for terrain. And when you make the terrain four times bigger, it's an even bigger deal. Are there creators out there that could do this? Certainly. I mean, there are wargaming you know, YouTube channels out there that frankly kind of run on spectacle. They talk about, oh, I painted the biggest such and such, and I've built the biggest such and such army, and I've done this and that kind of stuff. And that's fine. And to be perfectly honest, I'm a little surprised that none of them uh, on YouTube you know, hasn't done this yet, um, which is what made me think about doing it more and more initially after seeing these comments. I thought, well, yeah, I'd be the first, you know, I'd be, I'd be it. but I thought about it and thought about it. And then I thought, no, it seems like a giant project with very little return. And lately I'm all about smaller. Here comes the hidden point of this video. Now, when I say smaller, I don't mean smaller scale, like, you know, like tiny, like really, really tiny, way tinier than these guys. Although there are people that are getting into that, you know. Uh, Luke from Geek Gaming Scenics made a tiny scale 40K game by scaling down some 3D printed models and terrain and all that kind of stuff. Just, uh, he found, you know, STLs and made everything just smaller by a certain percentage and printed it all up. Pachow. And then that way he could still play a full-blown game of 40K, but it would take up much less space on the on the table, you know, had a much smaller table, it was quicker to paint, easier to store, all that kind of stuff. Um, but, but for me, I've just been getting into smaller games with fewer figures, a smaller playing board, skirmish stuff, if you've heard me talk about that before, which I'm sure you have, things like that. The benefits to smaller games are, I think, well, great. Having to buy and build and paint fewer models to make your force in your warband is it can't be, I think, overstated as far as benefits specifically. You know, it, there's less cost, there's less uh, storage, there's less uh, things you got to build, there's lots less things you got to paint, all that kind of stuff. You know, um, there's another kind of, I, I like to call it the buffet benefit, right? So um, when you go to a buffet, you can have a little bit of this and a little bit of this and a little bit of that and whatever. And that's each warband. You know, I'm going to do a little bit of this for Warcry and a little bit of this maybe for Kill Team and a little bit of this for some other game or Malifaux. Like there's all kinds of little skirmish kind of warbands that you can work on and then you can be really enjoying working on this one. And, you know, they, they all look kind of the same because they have the same kind of uniforms or whatever, but you do all that. And then the next thing you do very quickly is you start working on something else that's totally different. The opposite to a buffet is kind of like you just order or perhaps make a whole bunch of mashed potatoes. So you, let's say, love mashed potatoes, and so you get a giant bucket, 10 pounds of mashed potatoes, and you're like, man, this is awesome. And you start working on that first, you know, quarter of a pound of mashed potatoes that you eat. You're like, mm, these are so good. They got the garlic in there that I like or whatever. But by pound seven, you'll never want to eat mashed potatoes ever again. And that's an army game in many situations to many people. I like painting these space marines uh, in blue or green or orange or whatever color. By the time you get through Squad 7, you're going to be like, I hate painting these Space Marines. And that's the benefit as well to skirmish games, in my opinion. Um, the games are generally quicker, you know, that kind of thing. So you're not in a situation where you're like, oh, I played for three hours and lost. And you can be kind of bummed out about that. Instead, you can play for 45 minutes and then lose and then be like, okay, cool. Well, that was, you know, we had a good time or whatever. Let's do it again or do it again next time or whatever. It doesn't take as much of your time. There's also, again... I think it's more fun to play campaigns, you know, campaign style games with um, skirmish, you know, kind of game systems because you get, frankly, you get to have a story, you get to build a story, you get to build an emerging narrative, pachow, and uh, you also get, uh, frankly, more attached to the models when there's fewer of them. I, I, I kind of like that thing as well. So especially in tabletop wargaming and battle reports, I don't personally believe that bigger is better whether we're talking about the overall kind of like army you know, size or the actual physical you know, model size. 
So therefore, you're not going to see me making any giant size bat reps with action figures. And you'll also be glad to know I haven't bought any more of the action figures since these Chaos Space Marines, which I got in the later part of 2022 after the last video I made. Um, they're cool. I like them, but I don't know that I'm going to be buying any more. Now, will I buy some more? Maybe something cool will come up. But for right now, I have not gone, you know, out of control. So that's important. However, I am working on models and terrain for some small solo play battle reports that I'm going to do here on the channel. So small that they are played on a two foot by two foot board. And those are going to be coming in the future. I hope this video gave you something to think about when it comes to scale. Not just the physical scale of the models and the terrain and how that affects our playing, but also about like the size of the games that you want to be playing from big army games, you know, 10 pounds of mashed potatoes, down to very small skirmish games. If you liked this video, I'd be very happy if you would hit the like button down below. It's, it's, right, it's right down there. Uh, and subscribe if you want to see more of these types of videos. Thanks for watching.